I think the mood is a, is is really a bit more somber. I think people who are watching the conference today will have wanted there to be a bit more from Liz Truss about what answers she has to the biggest challenge that we face today, which is the cost of living crisis. It, it felt to me, and I think it felt to uh, to viewers across the country, that what we saw was much more of the same Tory failure. And what felt to me as like a party that was totally out of touch with the reality of, of people's lives. And I think it's disappointing that after eight weeks, when we've heard much more from Liz Trust about cutting corporation tax, that we didn't have a clear response at all to what she will do and whether she will take that really important step that we all know is needed, which is freezing people's energy bills and tackling so many of the other challenges that we face across the country. So mm. I'm afraid I mean, it's, it's, that it was a speech that didn't really say what she's going to really do and stand for as Prime Minister. Uh, Though those are things that I'm sure will emerge uh, over the next week or so. I mean, one of the interesting things, I suppose, is that... Um, you know, the Labour Party talks a lot about diversity, and the one thing the Tory party could be credited with uh, definite success on is here they've elected their third female prime minister. Um, I think the Labour Party still fails to even elect one female leader. Uh, her cabinet is likely to have only a few white men, as we learned in the Sunday Times yesterday. So uh, is it time, do you think, that Labour learnt something from the Conservatives? Well, I, I just about got all of that, Mariella. And look, I, I'm somebody who has campaigned for more diversity in our politics, uh, at the top in politics, at the top in business, uh, and worked cross-party on this. And that's even before I became a member of Parliament. I, uh, it's uh, something I've spent years doing. So look, so you must I be will disappointed. congratulate Liz on being the second... Yeah. On the, I will congratulate Liz on being the second um, uh, female Prime Minister. But look, third. the Labour Party has also had third, third two third, acting yeah, leaders one. who have been women. Uh, sorry, the, the two acting uh, leaders um, who have been uh, Margaret Beckett and, uh, and, and Harriet Harman. So I think we've also seen leadership at the top of our party. But also it is a good challenge, to the, an important challenge to the Labour Party and to all our parties to make sure that we've got the diversity that reflects the country. Mm. Uh, Craig, could I come to you uh, next? I think you're there on, on College Green too. Uh, Liz Truss won 57% of, of the vote. Uh, not the landslide that many were expecting. The finger is being pointed firmly at the inaccurate polls. But does it represent a, a, a much more fractured party than people might have supposed? No, not at all. And I can understand why uh, Seema is feeling um, sombre today, because uh, the Conservative Party just took a big step forward uh, today towards winning the next general election. Liz Truss used three words that I think will resonate with the British people and the Scottish people, which was delivery, delivery, delivery. She's going to deliver on the cost of living crisis. She's going to deliver on our energy and she will deliver in, uh, in the UK on rebuilding our public services after the COVID pandemic. And I think if she can do that and also return our economy to growth, then I think uh, we will be in a very strong position uh, at the next general election and that's why across the country uh, and particularly in Scotland we're ready to uh, come behind uh, our new leader to make sure that we stand firm on the questions of the union but also stand up uh, for those public services and all the important things that we need to be focused on and, and top of that list uh, for the new Prime Minister is the cost of living crisis and I expect to hear significant announcements in the coming days. The Times reports today, Craig, that Liz Truss is set to have an almost complete clear out of Boris Johnson's Downing Street team. Um, some have described her as the, uh, the continuity candidate, but, th but this would suggest otherwise. Well, if, if that is the case, then, then that, that will be the case. I mean, I'm not obviously uh, uh, in the inner uh, sanctum of, of the Trust campaign, but it's always down for the Prime Minister to choose the team that will help them uh, deliver. And loyalty is very important in politics. And making sure that you have a dynamic team round about you is something that has uh, that has hugely uh, benefited uh, Prime Ministers of all political parties in the past. And I would fully expect uh, Liz Trust uh, to do the same. Mm. Uh, Martin, you're in Scotland. Uh, will you be petitioning the, the, the new PM for an independence referendum? And, and how warmly is the arrival of Liz Truss in Downing Street being greeted in Scotland? Well, well Marielle, I wish I was in Scotland, but I'm, I'm, as a member of the House of Commons, I'm back at my desk in the Commons right now. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, it'd be interesting to figure out what the numbers were in Scotland. It'd be interesting to see who won out of the Scottish Conservative Unionist members who actually won the vote north of the border. Uh, and I think given the fact that we consistently campaign for independence as the Scottish National Party, I, I think we could take that uh, uh, as a go-to that we'll be continuing to campaign for an independence referendum 
And if that's not seen as a possibility, then it will be the next general election will be an independence referendum for Scotland. Do you think that um, Liz Truss's relationship with, with Nicola Sturgeon, which isn't rumoured, or is rumoured not to be the most friendly, isn't the most friendly, let's face it, is going to make it more difficult uh, for the pursuit of, of that referendum? Well, any time I've heard the First Minister speak about it, she's always tried to be pleasant, to uh, talk, uh, try and engage. Um, I, I certainly don't go and gossip and rumour, but, um, you know, I, you, you always want to try and build relationships with uh, politicians of other parties, especially when they are in a position, as the Foreign Secretary will be tomorrow once they travel to Scotland, it is that they will become Prime Minister, and the First Minister has been very clear that they will continue to work, reach out, try and, you know, make things work, but be very clear in their proposition that the First Minister of Scotland won a, 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 a supporting parliamentary victory at the last Scottish election to hold an independence referendum. That, to me, looks like fulfilling a manifesto commitment and an electoral majority. Mm. Uh, Christine, can I bring you in? We're, we're headed for a general election, uh, either sooner or later, uh, but the new Prime Minister has had just a sort of short amount of time, really, to gain public support. Um, I've mentioned the, the reaction on social media to her uh, appointment today. Uh, is the potential for Lib Dem and Labour gains, I mean, with the potential for Lib Dem and, and Labour gains, quite strong? I, isn't it time for a Lib Lab pact? No. Um, we will be fighting. That was emphatic. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, we will be fighting the seats in the general election, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later, that we believe we can win, where we believe that there are 80 seats in um, the country where we are in second place to the Conservatives, and we will be fighting to win as many of them as we possibly can. And I assume that the Labour Party will be uh, fighting to win the seats that they can from the um, the Conservative Party. But we will also be looking to win seats where wherever we can and to build our base. But the worrying thing at the moment is that what we are faced with under Liz Truss is more of the same crisis and chaos as we saw under Boris Johnson from the cost of living emergency to the NHS crisis. The Conservatives have shown very little um, to make us believe that they actually care or have any plan. Um, they failed the country and it's, it is time for that general election to have it sooner rather than later. But the first thing that Liz Truss really needs to do, that we all need her to do, is to scrap the energy price rise and avoid the social catastrophe that families and pensioners are facing this winter. Um, Seema, uh uh, we were talking there, Christine was talking there about you know the absence of a plan, but the Times reports that, that Liz Truss has a, a support package plan that might rival furlough. Uh, party politics aside in that case, are, are you relieved that the people of this country are, are set to get the help they need or may be about to? Well, this is certainly a time that demands that the new Prime Minister steps up to the scale of the challenge that's facing us. and. I think everybody, whilst we you know, had some forewarning of it, were shocked by the 80% uh, increase in the cap um, that was um, uh, announced uh, for October. And it's clear there needs to be an answer for households and for businesses to get us through this crisis. And it's got to see government, the, the businesses, industry, the country all working together to get us through this really, really difficult time. I'm just very surprised that Liz Truss has spent so long not saying very much um, mm. over eight weeks. And, and if you look at her record as well, um, voting for Boris Johnson's 15 tax rises, if you look at the fact that a lot of our energy crisis now is, is, has been the result of Tory inaction over so many years, why on earth have we had a halving of home insulation over 12 years? And now to see people effectively paying more for their energy bills um, uh, with the crisis that we're now in. We are overexposed to some of these challenges and shocks because we have not been prepared. We have not invested in the infrastructure in our country. And I think if Liz Truss is honest about that, she will, should answer the country as to why she voted for so many of the cuts and cuts in our infrastructure, energy resilience, um, environmental resilience as well. But we do need a response and we do need that quickly. That's what businesses said to me and said last week they need clarity they need certainty they need to plan ahead because this is about people's livelihoods this is about business prosperity and it's about jobs um, for our and 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 uh, and resilience for our future 
Um, do you think I could just run through with each of you what you think her number one priority should be in terms of um, you know, the things she actions uh, this week? Martin, maybe I'll start with you. Well, where to start? Um, but first of all, she has to cancel the planned price cap. This is a disaster for my constituents. It's not just in Scotland. It's a, it's a disaster for everybody across these islands. And the, the future Prime Minister, when they do become PM tomorrow, needs to step up the plate and end it. Um, let me turn to you, Craig. I think the new Prime Minister and the new government will have to step in and do something bold, decisive and ambitious on the global cost of living crisis. And from what I've seen uh, from the reports in today's papers, and I think we'll hear more this week, I think that's uh, what uh, will come forward. We must remember that it is a global cost of living crisis and that the, uh, the price rise is beyond our control. But there are definitely mitigations that can be put in place here domestically. And I uh, hope and expect that to be the case. Christine? It has to be energy. I mean, the, the price cap uh, going up could be ca catastrophic for families, pensioners and small businesses are also facing huge price rises and they don't have any price cap at all. We need the, this government, this next prime minister to seize that and do something about it. Because for years, the Conservative government has, you know, they've trashed the economy, they've neglected the NHS, they've taken voters for granted. We need them now to act to help people through this winter. Seema, last word to you. Uh, I think it's uh, without doubt she's got to tackle the energy crisis and freeze people's energy bills. I think the country is crying out for, uh, for, for that. And I think it's time that she now heeds Labour's calls, a very um, important call for paying for that through a windfall tax on the excess profits of oil and gas companies. But there's also so, other, so many other crises, as we know. So she's got to get a focus on the NHS and the crisis that we're seeing uh, with winter crisis coming ahead. Um, people's real worries about safety in their communities. And look, as I, I think, you know, just to correct myself from earlier, you know, as second re female prime minister in recent years, but also the third uh, in, in our country, I want to see a focus on an equal uh, kind of um, e equal kind of economic recovery post uh, COVID and into the future, because this is a really uncertain period. And what we want to see is that we have a country that's coming out more equal, not less equal, and more united and not more more divided. And she's got a big agenda to uh, make sure we've got a government focused on the country and that a country that um, uh, that is that is able to move forward, tackle the issues we're facing and move and come forward uh, much more prosperous.